Hi, my name is Clifford Pete and this is my Iron Man. I've set myself a goal about getting max cape from scratch Iron Man style. No trading, no handouts, no grand exchange, while also clearing most of the content available in the game. Let's dive right into this. So my way of doing the Guardians of the Rift minigame with the Lunar Spellbook is working just fine. I was planning to continue with Desert Treasure 1 for the Ancient Spellbook because I can barrage the Dust Devils. But the requirement for Death Runes, which is Morning Sand Part 2, caught me kinda off guard. So yeah, today we are doing the Morning Sand Part 2 and before that I'll do some fast Elblor levels. That means buying the Eyes of Newt for the Guam and Irrit potions, for the Attack and Super Attack potions. For the Ranar potions I'm using them as a prayer potions, so that's why I'm picking some Snape Grass at Hosidius at the Hobgoblin Peninsula. For the Heralanda potions I'm buying the Sardines at the Piscarelios shop and I'll be making Spideens at the Creature of Creation and that's why I wanted to have the Medium Ardy Diary because the Red Spider's eggs from the Spideens will be noted. And Spideens will not be the only creature I'll be making at the Creature Creation because I'm gonna make some Unicows for the Unicorn Horns because the Unicorn Horn Dust is the only thing that gives me XP from the Marantel potion. So far so good. Currently I'm out of unicorn horns so I just need to bank all of these items to withdraw some unicorn horns, some cow hides and repeat the process all over again until I have enough unicorn horns. And same process will be used for spideens which are made from raw sardines and the red spider eggs. For the tournament potion I decided to use the ashes as tertiary ingredient but I think I'll still need to do the Shades of Morton quest to be able to create the Serum 207. So moment of truth, yeah I actually need to do the Shades of Morton quest before I can make the Serum 207. Here are the Spideens and Heralander potions made into Restore potions. In the future I might make compost potions instead of the Restore for the increased farming yield because of the super compost. And the last tertiary ingredient grind is the Mortmire Fungi for the Avento Unfinished Potions which turns them into the Super Energy Potions which can later be made into Stamina Potions as soon as I get my Herbord to level 77. And there we go, 54 Herblore. Only 4 levels in Herblore are separating me from the Herb Sack. And let's also do one fast tree run. I'm planting teak trees because I really need to use the wood later on for construction levels and I was also considering uh, leveling my stats so I'm eligible for a quest cape. For example I'm missing 9 hunter levels to be eligible for the Sunk of the Elves quest. So I thought I would power grind that through the bug traps but for that I need the eagle speak quest. Done and done I can use the box traps now. Yeah it's kinda shame there was no combat in the quest. So let the grind begin. 70 hunter done, that's nice, that's one thing less to worry about. And also got hunter level for all quests requiring hunter level. Next on the list is 70 farming. I know it's kinda shameful for an Iron Man to do the tight farm in a game, but I really want the farmer's outfit, a spare farmer hat for emote clue, grid color scan and auto weeding for, you know, farming itself. 65 farming! Now I can access the farming guild mid tier and grow a spore. Yeah, no way I'm neglecting my seaweed runs. 69 farming and I got enough points for herb sack again. Alright, enough slacking, let's do some quests. So first on the list is regicide and yeah, this is gonna be my setup for the quest. So let's traverse through the underground pass again. This feels like I'm watching Gillenor Games Season 2 Episode 3 for the first time again. Wait, what? Ah, oh, wrong pathing. Damn it. Yeah. Like I have on Discord the layout for the for this like grid maze and I still managed to screw it up somehow. But apart from that, no major hiccups. That's a nice thing to see. I just remembered how painful it can be navigating through this Tyrone 1 forest. It's a freaking maze. And jump! Uh, attempt number two. Third time to charm? No. 
So, four times the charm. Yes. Probably should have brought more food. Oh, so now I can navigate through the dense forest obstacles. So there we go. Oh, Tira's guard. 12. Ouch. Not sure if I can say spot him here, so it's overhead time. And there you go, pal. Sit. If I'm correct, there should be no fighting for the more in this regicide quest. Now I need to pick up the barrels to make the barrel bomb, but I, as far as I can remember, you also need that for Morning Sand Part 1. And there's also a chance to mess that up. So yeah, I'm picking four barrels just to be safe. Man, finding the spot to fill the barrels with the coal tar was kind of a challenge. And let's grab some sulfur while I'm at it. Oh no, it's this freaking trap again. Second attempt, yes. And it's fireworks making time. One block of quick lime. Turn that into dust. Some ground sulfur. There we go. So it's time to make some nafta. So how was it? Tar regulator all the way to the right. Pressure, no pressure valve. And it hit the green uh, sweet spot in the pressure. Now is the time. Now to add coal. A little more. Nothing's happening. Heat is getting down, so add more coal. So now let's make some nafta. Tower regulator all the way to the right. Pressure wolf in the middle of it and hit the sweet spot. And let's add some coal. The main part is now by adding coal you increase the heat of the fractional still. But don't forget that you must not overdo the heat when adding coal. And I'm doing it kind of slow because I messed one barrel already. And there we go. And there goes my second barrel of nafta. Like if you have only one, just repeat the process like I did. And after mixing the ingredients and traversing through the underground pass again, it's time to enjoy the fireworks. Fire in the hole! And quest finished. Man, Regis head was kinda long, but throwing elves will be much faster. I'll need to kill the Moss Guardian in the Glarial's tomb without any items. Sort of. This goblin paint cannon is somehow allowed. And it's not giving any stats, but you can attack one tick faster than regular. See, it says 1.8 seconds. If I unequip it, it says 2.4, but equipped says 1.8. So let's grab some food along with my amulet of power and the ring of recoil and let's do some damage. Buff up with pots. Well, that felt easy. Props to Slayer Music for this technique. Anyway, let's grab the seed. Let Elund enchant the seed. Plant it in the waterfall dungeon. Now, do I want the crystal shield or crystal bow? Eh, tough choice. Crystal bow, I guess. Rowan Cal's finished. Yeah, I picked the crystal bow because I'm not sure how much would I use the crystal shield actually. Maybe in the future. And yeah, I'm missing Sheep Herder for starting the Morning Sand Part 1. So let's do it. 10 minutes later and Sheep Herder is finished. I remember it took me like one hour back in the day. So let's start the Morning and Part 1. This will cut you down to size. Oh, he leveled all... He lowered all my stats. Yeah, I'm base 20 when it comes to combat skills. I mean, why are not more NPCs in quests doing this? Jagex, this is just a rhetorical question. Well, uh, that's nothing what a quick trip to Frog Sunclave couldn't fix. Let's steal the soap from Tigit to repair the modern clothes. And let Aronwen repair the rest. 
Now then let's buy some dice for the toads, which I'll need to inflate and shoot with the bazooka-like thing. And I'm buying a little, little extra more in case I mess that up somehow. Alright, there's the bazooka-like thing. Alright, let's use the red die on the bellows and inflate the toad. So I got one red toad and let's make another one just to be sure in case tick delay happens. And let's repeat the process for all colors of dice. Yeah, nothing suspicious about this. Murder wielding RPG going through the Ardoin. So let's click aim and fire and let's locate the sheep. You cannot enter far from yourself. Target acquired, fire! So the green sheep have been redyed. So let's load the red toad into the device and repeat the process for the rest of the sheep. Done and done. So let's report to a silt. And now I need to poison the food supplies. Like how low can these elves go? Well, there goes my second barrel of naphtha. Cook the toxic naphtha on a range. Do not use it on a fire. My curiosity must not overcome my rational thinking. Okay, there is the poison powder. And let's poison the food supplies. Because, you know, just because. And with all tasks for a silt done, I just need to report all that to Ariane 1 in Latia. So let's tidy out. And Morning Sand Part 1 is finished. So let's make haste and start the Morning Sand Part 2 right away. And because I'm dumb, I forgot the chisel, but luckily there's one lying on the table. So we got the key to the temple. And let's see what this Temple of Light is all about. Yeah, the dig team, let's say, didn't make it. So let's take a small piece of the dark crystal and tell you out to let ya before the shadows eat me alive. Then it gives you a newly formed crystal. Well, it's time for some gearing up. I really hope this inventory is gonna work. And as for my gear, I got monk rope top, monk rope bottom, emerald of power for the extra prayer bonus. And the rest of my items are just graceful. And like the reason why I'm still keeping the mourner gear in my inventory and not drop it to ease up my inventory space is I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this in one go. But let's see. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like I need a little bit more help from the Quest Helper plugin for this. It should be much easier from now on. So let's start solving the puzzle. I mean, after a few entry steps of each like puzzle step, I can pick up the prayer potions I left there because because with every another puzzle step, I will have more head mirrors and more colored crystals to work with. So plan will be place three or four head mirrors and grab the prayer potions I had to drop, so I won't run into a situation when I'm out of prayer points. I remember this part very clearly. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, third time the charm. Got 70 agility. Attempt number four. Could it be? Yes. So now I need to reset the puzzle. Shortcut? Yeah. And after roughly 45 minutes with the Quest Helper plugin, I managed to navigate through all puzzles in this maze. And this is the part when you can gather all these items in the list. And the dwarf will trade you the items for the death talisman. So that was the reason why I was so happy that I got catalytic talisman from the Guardians of the Rift minigame. And also list of these items is probably random for every account. Anyways, let's use the catalytic talisman on the death ruins and attune the newly made crystal at the death altar. Let's leave and rotate the mirror if for whatever reason I need to get back here and you and use the newly made crystal on the dark rocks. Now just let's tally away and tell Ariane 1 job has been done. And there we go, Morning Sand Part 2 finished. I'm happy that I was able to do the Light Mason 1 go. 71 agility, hell yes. Now let's refresh the charges on the Elf Teleport Crystal for some cash. Boom, three more charges on the Teleport Crystal. Now I want to I want to see this. Hell yeah, twenty eight death rooms and a heart are diary. Nice. Uh, well, I I guess no way how to pass this black light door. So 
That's kind of sad. So I guess I'll just home Terry out of here. Guess, guess if I want to craft death runes, I just have to use the abyss and just Terry out with the teleport to POH tablets. Well, folks, that's everything for today's episode. Hit like if you like, consider a sub, and I'll see you next time. Peace.